this is phenomenal such a heavy car to be able to do this wow such a different kind of drive than in comfort as soon as you put it in sport so much more power kicks in this is the eqa 250 plus it's electric and one of my favorite things about this car is this beautiful screens in front of you the two of them split screens once for your speedometer and once for your entertainment and all that in stuff. this video i'm going to give this eqa a first impression review i'm going to take it on a test drive and see how it is on the roads in city roads on the highway on b roads i'm going to launch it from zero to 60 and uh, we'll see how it is and if it's your first time here welcome feel free to subscribe i post these videos every other day of first impression review on new and used vehicles. Anyway, to the car and let's start straight away with a second screen over there. As you can see, it's currently on the consumption page. Now you can control this screen in three different kinds of ways. You've got a touchpad down here with the shortcut buttons on the sides. This is also a touch screen, so you can actually touch it. And then you can control the left-hand side screen from the left-hand side uh, buttons and scrolling options of the on the steering wheel to bring up different options on the infotainment system you can simply press home and you can scroll through using this black tab all the different options that you have media radio navigation phone etc you can also do that by using the touchpad so you can scroll through them they have a little haptic feel and it makes a sound listen you got that right and when you want to choose the one you want, you simply press it in. Okay. And the other way is you can use the shortcut buttons on the side. So if you want to go to the navigator, you press the navi button and the navigator pops up. Radio and the radio pops up. Going further down, you have the air vents, which have ambient lighting around them. It's hard to see them on this beautiful sunny day in London. And the interesting thing is that when you change the temperature, if you go up in temperature, so you make the temperature hotter, these bright up in red. And if you go cold, they bright up in blue. Going further down, you have this little crappy piece over here. It doesn't feel very solid. But again, you have all the menus on here for the AC, the heating, the climate, the front air, the back air for the back window, and all that kind of stuff. It's very easy to use. If you want to bring up the main climate control on the infotainment system, you simply press the last button that says menu, and there it is. You can control your fan speed, control the temperature, which vents the air should flow from. And down here you have the other options of the rear window, uh, automatic, you can switch it off, air conditioning sync both sides because it's a dual zone climate control. Continuing further down, you have a little storage area with a wireless phone charger together with a USB-C socket. And then you've got the two cup holders and I spoke about this yesterday on the video I did yesterday. One of the things I love about it is if you have a small bottle, you press that button and these things pop out to secure your drink that it doesn't shake around. Going further back, you've got your touchpad with your shortcut menu buttons, which we spoke about earlier. You have your volume button on the right-hand side of it. And on the left-hand side, you can change between different options, individual, sport, comfort, and eco. Behind that, you have this handle, which is completely pointless and useless. You could just rest your hand on it when your arm is on the armrest. And then you've got the actual armrest, press the button, opens up, and you have a little bit of storage inside with two USB mini sockets. Overall, the quality feels fine. It feels sturdy. It looks good. It looks great. It's one of the nicest interiors of any kind of vehicle. Another thing I like is the frameless mirror that you, that you get on it. And the quality in general is great. You've got the red stitching on this model. You have some kind of fake plastic over here, but that doesn't matter. It actually looks quite good. One thing I don't like is the piano black that comes with all of these new Mercedes uh, in this kind of range. It uh, picks up fingerprints, it gets scratchy, and it's not necessary. The seats are comfortable, they're nice and supportive, and you can sit in a nice, comfortable position. The storage, you get a nice, big glove box, door storage, plenty of space in the, in the door bins, and you've got plenty of space on the driver's side as well. Can't fit my coffee cup because it's quite narrow, but it's uh, very useful for bottles. Continuing on the door, you've got your electric windows and your electric folding mirrors. You've also got your heated seat button on here. Then moving to the cockpit, steering wheel, very comfortable. It's very easy to get in a comfortable position. You got reach and rake on this car. It's not electric, but it's good enough and it works. On the right hand side, you got your automatic lights, your parking brake, 
And then the steering wheel itself. This is a electric car. So the paddle shift is actually to increase the generative braking. So when you press it down, I think it is, I'll show you soon. And then when you take your foot off the gas, it actually slows down for you to prevent you from using both pedals. It's quite interesting. I personally don't like it. Tell me in the comments below what you think, if you prefer this kind of braking. Right, on the right hand side, you have the driving stalk. It's not a gear stick because there are no gears on this car. It's an electric car. So drive down, reverse up, center is park. Now the center screen is very customizable. I will talk about it soon. You can control it all from here. And the left hand side of the steering wheel, you control the infotainment system. One of the things I love about this car is it's got a twin sunroof. You open it simply by pulling this little lever backwards and it opens up. It's a very hot day in London today. So I am gonna keep it closed, but check it out. Isn't it gorgeous? Beautiful, beautiful. Almost as beautiful as this car. Let's just check out the back seats very briefly. I'm not gonna do an in-depth review on this car. There's plenty of it on YouTube. The seats are very comfortable. They all come down, they split and uh, they open up a beautiful big space to the boot. You get uh, netted storage behind the seats. Some kind of interesting storage over here behind the driver's armrest. You've got the vents and you have two USB mini sockets. This is the armrest and you've got cup holders that come out a little bit flimsy. Mercedes could have done better with this. But you know what's interesting? First impression coming back in the back is, first of all, these door handles. Not sure what that is, stainless steel. You've got door bins over here and the windows open all the way that is brilliant well done mercedes good on you you know and it feels good quality here that's my driving position and there's plenty of knee room leg room is okay and uh head height is even better but one thing i don't like is that because it's an electric car my feet my legs are very high up it feels like i'm almost squatting in here the seats are very low down and for some reason there's some kind of exhaust tunnel, even though there is no exhaust in this car. Right, this car is obviously child locked, so I've got to open my window, stick my hand out and open the door. Let's check out the boot space really quickly. You open it by pressing that in, and voila, the boot opens. Electronically operated, this is your charger to charge the car. Got a little bit of a netting storage area here. Got tethering points and hook points. Some elasticated storage area, a little bit of more storage area. And underneath, there is not much here. Just stuff to help you fill up if you get a burst tire. There's no lip, so Getting things in and out will be very, very easy. I'm going to take it for a quick uh, test drive and see how it drives and uh, give back my first impressions of what I feel about this and how it feels. Let me just start by saying I'm in Hampstead Garden Suburb in London. And a random fact about Hampstead Garden Suburb is that every house has to have square windows do you see that? And another thing is that every house or every home in general, so apartment blocks, flats, houses, have to have hedges in their front gardens. It's a very expensive area to live. It's uh, one of the nicest areas in the city, the country, and probably in the world. Anyway, first impressions of this Mercedes is it's extremely quiet and smooth. We love that. The car is electric, and uh, one of the great things about electric cars are they're quiet. There's no engine, so there's no revving. It's very easy to drive. The steering on here is extremely light, and it's extremely easy. I'll just go through some of the different options that you can do with your display over here. If you press the home button, that will change 
the display in the, in the center. So you can have the navigator, you can have your telephone, you can have your assistance, which is the, the lane assist, steering assist, where it keeps you in lane. Uh, let me show you. So if I press that, pushing the black button, there you go. So I don't need it on these kind of side roads. It's not necessary. This is more for motorway driving, which I'm going to take it on soon to see how it feels. Electric car on the motorway, see what kind of speeds we get to. Obviously, I won't go over 70 miles an hour because that's the speed limit here. Um, other options you have, go back home. You can have your telephone there. My phone is not yet connected. I will connect it soon. What other options we got? We got the navigation. So you can either have it as a small little center uh, navigator or you can have it as a full screen. Now, I'm not going to keep on here because I think it's going to be flashing on the camera, but it's uh, really, really beautiful. All right, other things you can have is your trip information. So how much we're averaging, more averaging stuff, more consumption stuff. You know, on a petrol car, I'll show you the petrol consumption. On a battery car like this one, it'll show you your miles per kilowatt, etc. You can put the speed over there. Another thing you can do is you can change the screen to look like this. Beautiful, isn't it? You can have your radio there, so your different, uh, oh, let me turn that down, change through different channels. By the way, we're turning on to Winnington Road, which is the second nicest street in the neighborhood. It's a shame because a lot of the houses, they've started taking down and building apartments, but there are still some nice big mansions here. As you can see, look at them, beautiful. When I was a kid, I used to love coming on my bicycle, riding up this road, going up and down, checking out the houses. Right, on the left hand side, you can control everything on this screen. So you can have your radio there, you can have your media, you swipe through them by putting your thumb over this black button. Reminds me of the, um, I forgot what they're called now, the phones. Remember the phones with those black things? The old-fashioned phones, what were they called? Everybody had them. It'll come to me later. If you remember, please put it in the comment section below. I can't do a review driving through Hampstead Garden suburb without driving down one of my favorite streets with the most beautiful houses and cars. I mean, check out this house right in front of us with that Rolls Royce in the driveway. I drove past here yesterday. He had a Bentley, he had a Maybach, he had absolutely everything in that driveway. What a car collection the guy has. But the houses here are absolutely stunning. One of my favorite roads in London. And on a day like today, the sun is shining. What more can you ask for? Look at them, beautiful. And check out that house, not this one, but the house right in front of us. Look how big it is. That is pure prime real estate property in London. Tell me in the comment section below what you think of these houses. And if I should continue doing videos of uh, different areas of London, showing you the beauty of my favorite city in the world. Right in front of us is Hampstead Heath. One of the biggest parks in London. It was actually from Hampstead Heath, where Guy Fawkes was planning to watch himself and the whole party when they uh, were planning on blowing up Houses of Parliament. That's Hampstead Heath for you. Beautiful views all the way to central London. But have a look at this. Look what's going on here. Giba Kukwoski Tondos Mamish Me Ein Olam Habo. It's beautiful, huh? Nivos and nice. What do you think? I think it's stunning. I think it's absolutely stunning here. Especially on a day like today. Right, let's launch it zero to 40 in comfort mode. Oh. 
very very nice very silent pickup that was anyway we're on the a406 the north circular we're heading towards the m1 where i'm going to uh give it some first impressions of how it feels on the highway here's a random fact about the motorways in the uk did you know that the m1 which we're coming up to now junction one was the first motorway built in the uk and another random fact is that there's no junction three on the m1 it goes junction well there's no junction one because this is i guess there is junction one because it says on there it then goes to junction two and then skips to junction four and that's because junction three was supposed to be a junction however they decided to do a service station over there instead anyway we're on the motorway currently going 50 miles an hour the speed limit here is 70 and it's so surreal driving an electric car on the motorway there's no engine noise you do get a little bit of wind noise from the wing mirrors over here but it's quiet and peaceful set it on cruise control set just press up and it goes to set to cruise control take my feet off the pedals let's see how the lane assist works take the hands off the steering wheel and no it doesn't <laughs> either it doesn't have it or it's not engaged let me have a look home now we'll go to the left Right, let's see if that changes anything. I'm heading towards into the lane. There's no cars on the left. And yes, it is. It is steering to the right and it's keeping me in lane. I'll have to take over because I've got a car on my right. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's extremely comfortable. It's extremely comfortable. I, I actually love it. Yes, it's all fun having a V8 and revving it up and hearing everything. But you know, it's also nice to sit back, relax in silence. It's beautiful. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Play LBC. And there it is, it's playing, it's on mute, but it's playing. It's brilliant. You don't even have to touch anything. You can just talk to the car and tell it what to do. I don't think this is going to work because it's actually because it's not connected to my Bluetooth. But let's try it anyway. Hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? What's the weather today? In order to use online functions of the voice system, please check your Mercedes Me settings. Yeah, so that's not going to work because I'm not connected to the Me app at the moment. Yeah, I like it on the motorway. Right, let's go see what it's like on a B road, on a twisty B road. Right, I got to the B road. The speed limit here is 60. Let's put it into sport mode and let's launch it. Three, two, one, and go. Whoa, this thing is bloody fast. That's it, 60. Wow, absolutely phenomenal. I can feel straight away from putting it into sport mode that everything has stiffened up a little bit. The steering's a little bit harder. The throttle response is much quicker. And bloody hell, this thing moves. This is phenomenal. Such a heavy car to be able to do this. Wow, such a different kind of drive than in comfort. As soon as you put it in sport, so much more power kicks in. The suspensions are harder. It feels sporty, it feels it's gripping the road a lot more. You can feel a little bit the weight, especially as you come into bends. As you pull off the wheel, spin slightly. There is a lot of power on this car. There is a lot of power, but this car bloody well moves. Wow, this is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. This is a lot of fun on these B roads. In a way, it feels like it belongs here, but it also belongs on a motorway and it belongs in a city too. It belongs everywhere. All right, that's it, 30 miles an hour. 
This car is such a versatile car, it can do everything. It can be a family car, it can be a city car, it can be a motorway car, and it could be a sporty car too. Wow, I'm very, very impressed with that. That was extremely impressive. Wow. But this is another neighborhood. I'm on the outskirts of London right now. I'm in Aylesbury, which is right next to Watford. Junction 5 of the M1. Oh, the tree in the middle of the road. Oh, I love this car. Absolutely love it. Look at this place. Beautiful. It's a shame the speed is back down to 30 over here. I'd love to just put my foot down. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and feel free to post in the comments where you're from. I'm always curious to know the people that watch my videos where they come from. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.